Hey everybody, so this vlog starts out on uh, Interstate 35 and we were heading to downtown San Antonio. Uh, there's Joshy Boy. Joshy Boy is shooting video and pretty soon he'll shoot video, me shoot video on the phone. Anyway, right now we're uh, got a uh, stop to make in downtown San Antonio. I need to get me one of those things to hold the telephone, whatever that's called. Telephone holding thing. And then we're going to head towards Uvalde. We have plans for tonight. We have lots of ammunition. We have our Pulsar gear. We have our Nemo rifles. And the wind is perfect. So what do you think we're going to do? Go ahead and hit me up if you got any questions or comments. You want to see us doing something different on the shows or the vlogs. Go ahead and post it below. And uh, we're going to get on to San Antonio. And hopefully my blood pressure will not go up too high. And hopefully Old Red will hold up on this trip. It turned over recently to 340,000 miles. And I had it since it was brand new, and he's running pretty good now. Okay, now my hands out of the way. Why is it every time I come to San Antonio, the traffic sucks? Yes, the traffic sucks. And it's like years ago, I used to tell the kids when the kids went to school in San Antonio, I'd have to drive them all the way into town to take them to school and say, this is as good as it's going to ever be. And so that kind of answers my own question because everybody wants to be here except for me right now. We're moving on at lightning speed right now. At this rate, we'll be able to hunt tomorrow morning when the sun comes up. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show you all something. Look up behind me. See that big old tall building right there? That's where Colton works. That sucks, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, I had to come over here to to uh, pick up a little camera right here and uh, I let Josh drop me off and so Josh is running around and Josh got lost we're not cut out to be in the city so anyway Josh got lost and right now I've been sitting here uh, I just got hit on by a guy not that way not that way he was hitting on me for money he was he's not my type anyway he's a he <laughs> All right, I'll shut up. Here comes Josh right here. Here comes Josh, I'm gonna put my thumb up. Here, come on Josh, pick me up, pick me up. Yeah, downtown San Antonio, how's that for cool? There he is. <laughs> I bet you right now he feels lost. How you doing? You gotta have to move your seat way up because I'm short. Okay. <laughs> That makes me feel so good. Josh is shorter than I am, so he had to move my seat up to reach the pedals. <laughs> All right, so you can see over my shoulder right here, uh, some of the volunteers that showed up last night to, to be on video. And uh, we're, with the conditions really, were not real good last night. The uh, wind wasn't good. We had a big uh, storm threatening in, coming in from Mexico, but we got out to this ranch. We drove around, uh, we did some scouting. That's one thing that doing this, uh, you know, when you when you have, you know, a lot of people will say, how do you get to go on so many different hog hunts? How do you get all these landowners to, to let you go on these hunts? And the deal is, when I, I tell them, I said, I've got a key to the gate. And it's like, well, a key to the gate? Yeah, the key to the gate is uh, called uh, real good thermal gear. And what happens when you've got good thermal gear, you're able to, uh, I mean, these people know, I mean, Texas, well, many parts of Florida and, in Georgia, heck, Alabama now. I mean, you know, in Louisiana, y'all got lots of hog problems. And so uh, the landowners, but they can't kill all the hogs. I mean, think about it. How do they get somebody to come kill the hogs? Well, you got you to gotta have the right gear. You got to be respectful. You got to know what the hell you're doing. But uh, when you have all this stuff, the, the landowners, uh, my experience has been, they say, just come on out. Just uh, leave the place better than you found it and take as many hogs with you as you can. So anyway, we wound up doing last night. We wound up, went out and... Uh, we shot these, well, we shot more than these, but anyway, here's some right here in the back of the pickup truck, and uh, these are real good ones. They're they're good hogs to take out, and uh, we've got a, I've got to run up to uh, to Sonora, Texas, right now. Uh, actually, when the sun comes, we're going to make one lap through the pasture and see if we can pick up a straggler running around, and then uh, we're going to uh, I've got to run up to Sonora. I left something up there uh, from our last trip, and it's only about 80 miles, so it's not a bad drive. I'm going to run up there, but uh, Anyway, if, uh, if you're looking to go hog hunting on a place and trying to get the keys to the gate, it starts with having the right gear.
driving through Texas is uh, pretty cool. Uh, I guess that's the reason why people all over the country, all over the world, really want to live here. Uh, you know, Texas is big. I mean, it's over 800 miles from tip to tip, and uh, the country is real diverse. This is a western Texas hill country. Pretty arid, but it's real pretty. I mean, got a lot of different uh, oak trees and cedar trees, a lot of dry riverbeds down through here, and it's game rich as it can be. And the cool thing I like, really like about coming here, it's all the little towns that you go through. I mean, lots of little bitty towns, and so uh, the people that live in these towns are kind of like uh, you and me in that uh, if you want to get off the grid, the West Texas Hill Country is a beautiful place to get off the grid, and I just love coming here. Cook no way. We're in microwave for 15 minutes. Well, we can microwave for 15 minutes. We have 15 minutes. Say hi. This is dinner right here. What is it? Texas gumbo. Okay, so Josh is gonna make it. We're we're uh, fixing to go out. And... Did you read the directions? I think so. Well, I mean, because all I know how to do is hit one button on that thing, start. So. Anyway, this is a, for those of you who think we got it made, we do have it made. Man, we could be living in some foreign country. Instead, we're living in the United States, the greatest place in the world. But we're going to have a, oh, here's a story here from George and Ruby. We don't, uh, okay, cooking instructions. 13 to 15 minutes until hot. Okay, so, all right, we're going to see if, uh, and what is it? It is sausage and chicken and shrimp and crawfish. Mmm. Mm -mm. So we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Were you supposed to take the lid off? It doesn't say not to. Well, it doesn't say to either. Did it? All right, when else spent, when everything else was, we gotta turn this on. We might be boiling it out of, what's that, number three, place on a cookie sheet? No, we're not doing that. It's the oven, microwave. Mmm, put it 13 minutes and watch it boil over. Mm. <laughs> Is it supposed to be soupy like that? I hope so. Wow, what do you do to thicken it up? Bread? I guess. Is it warm? I know it's got to be warmer. It's, you had it in the microwave all the time. Pretty warm. Good enough for who's for? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. I think you're supposed to put that over like something, but... Anyway, ooh, I think that's a piece of okra. I think that's mine. And a bean. Uh-oh. We're in trouble tonight. Beans. I don't know. The wind is terrible, and Dylan's going to complain. Man, the wind is so bad on this vlog, but uh, we can't help the wind. It's starting to rain. Uh, we've been out shooting hogs, and uh, anyway, we got some. This one right here, for whatever reason, it's got a leak. They have all got leaks, but uh, we've been having a pretty good night. The hogs haven't had a good night, but we've had a good night. And it's starting to rain, so we're going to get out of here. But uh, we got a long drive back to the office tomorrow and start editing some of this stuff and have some more fun. And I think we better check for ticks because I'm telling you the ticks are all over these guys. Look at that. You see that tick right there? See that tick? Woo! <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll be checking for ticks in little bitty places. <laughs> All right, we're fixing to get on the road. We had real good luck on the feral hogs this morning when we wound up decided we're going to keep one. We made a post on our Facebook page and Instagram that if anybody wanted some hog meat, all they had to do is let me know because we're going to have way more than what we can handle. And so we had a lot of good response on that. Nothing has gone to waste on this hunt. We got, uh, in my opinion, what I think is the best hunt we've gotten so far. Uh, regarding thermal gear. What I'm trying to do here, this little guy right here, I wish I had a hanging tree to hang it up in, but I had a, about 10 minutes of extra time, so I decided I would come over here and just get the skin off of it right quick, throw it in the ice chest, and that way it's good when we get home, and more importantly, I don't have to do this at home. So all I'm trying to do is just get it to where I can get it downsized. And, uh, you know, we just made a video a little while ago on uh, field dressing. A hog and if y'all have never checked out our videos on our website I would encourage you to do that because we've got a lot of really good instructional videos on there but if you're an outdoorsman if you want to be an outdoorsman I think that you're gonna find 
a lot of good information on it. So anyway, we're gonna decapitate this guy if I can find the right joint and then put him in the ice chest and we'll be gone. But this is a perfect eating size pig and what we've got plans for this guy. We got to, we'll dump this out in the dumpster, but this right here, what it looks like, perfect. Wouldn't you say that is perfect for a, for a uh, nice little Sunday afternoon barbecue? That's exactly what's gonna happen to it. That way, the meat cools down, doesn't take up as much room in the ice chest. And no, I'm not using the Yeti ice chest for those who pay attention. There are a lot of people that pay attention. So anyway, I gotta wash up and we're heading back. So if you're on the road with Keith Warren and it's lunchtime, I have a, I have a real uh, canny ability to be able to locate Chinese restaurants. Do you agree with that, Josh? I agree. And so, anyway, we located one. Yummy. All right, I'm northbound on Interstate 35 this morning. I'm heading to actually a, a, a gun range up outside of Cleveland, Texas. I've never been up there before. I'm going to meet up with some buddies of mine. We're going to be shooting some guns here in a little bit. Actually, uh, there's a gun company up here that uh, I'm doing some... Uh, research on them, I'll put it that way. You know, research on how they, not only the, uh, the guns and how the, uh, you know, the quality of the guns, but I'm researching how they market because it's kind of a, I mean, the gun market, I don't know if y'all paying attention to it or not, but the gun market is, uh, it's full to, to say the least. It's very fragmented. You know, years ago growing up, I can remember there were, you know, Remingtons, and Savages, and Winchesters, and you know that that was about it and then you know it's like well you got Mossberg now and, and then you got Seiko and of course Legendary Arms Works and, and we're talking about bolt guns and CZ and oh my god there are just all kinds of guns out there now as far as manufacturers go so I'm going up there to check these guns out but more importantly check and see how they market the guns because if I was in the gun making business I'd want to be paying attention, like who, who are the leaders? How are they uh, marketing? Because, I mean, let's face it, with a crowded market and a media that is actually uh, anti-gun, clearly, uh, the way they market guns, I think, is really important. So I'm fixing to hopefully learn something today, if I can get through this traffic. I got a four and a half hour drive to the range, is what it says. Oh boy. Follow me here. Follow me here. Kendall. Yes. You gotta wave. Why am I waving? Was this oh. Okay. And the last time I saw Kendall was in the NRA. Yeah. In that party. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sure. Yep. With Maddie. With Wait, Maddie. what? She, she was yes, there. She was yeah, there. yeah, yeah. She, she all just weren't together. She was. And I actually brought you a drink. You remember that? I do. I do. Okay. I do. I do. Yes. I just Look at you, Kevin. Look at that belly. Now, let me tell you. Well, <laughs> say bye. Bye, vlog. Hi there, how are you? It'd be better if you happen to find that if somebody turns them in. Okay. It would have been a It said age. Old. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go further out. Let's walk it out. Ready? All right, we're sending one at a thousand, and we got a pretty good wind. Okay, that's good. That's real good. I like it. So this is six five Creedmoor. Well, that was fun. I had an opportunity to meet some new friends and uh, shoot a couple of guns and we shot out there to a thousand yards. Uh, got to see some old friends and uh, really had a good time. It was kind of a long way to go to do that, but six hour drive's not bad. But uh, 
anyway, I'm heading back now, and uh, tomorrow is a is a day that I'm really looking forward to. Tomorrow, we're actually going to go. Uh, I've got I don't know who all is from the office supposed to show up, but everybody was invited from the office to come out to the ranch. And we're going to try to uh, hunt for sheds because we really haven't had a chance to hunt for them. And then Maddie's going to take a pig that I shot earlier in the week and put it on her Traeger grill and see tomorrow night we'll wind up eating the pig so we're going to hunt for sheds and probably catch some catfish while we're out there and just have a good time and, but I've got about another five hours of driving here in front of me and so anyway just another day uh, a lot of people go how you do it man I don't know how to do it I mean it's uh, a lot of people think that, that you know this is a job for me and I guess considering you know, I, I get, yeah, it's a profession, but uh, I just keep doing it. It's just what I do. Is it for the money? <laughs> it's not for the money. It's because I love what I do, and I really want to help encourage more people to get out and shoot and hunt and enjoy the outdoors, and I think it's good for the soul. All right, we're out of the ranch today. We got a bunch of people coming over and it is fixing to rain, it sounds like. The noise that you hear is not just a Traeger, but it's rain hitting on the metal roof, which is a good thing. We're not going to complain. This pig right here we shot earlier in the week, and we're going to put this on now and cook it about probably six hours. And take it off. In the meantime, we got some chickens to stick on there and some different stuff, but we're going to season it up pretty good and then we're going to smoke it and cook it up I like to put this I like lots of seasoning everybody likes lots of seasoning we're going to hit it and then one, one thing I like to do when I get done put it on like this you just kind of let it sit a while and so the the spice sticks to the meat. I think that's what I do. And once it sticks to the meat, then I'll flip it over and do the other side. It won't take very long, but I like lots of seasoning. Anyway, we wound up what we're planning on doing here, here a little bit. We're going to go out, we're going to look for sheds while the pig is on the pit here and see if we can find some sheds that we haven't picked up. We really haven't spent a lot of time out here looking for sheds this year just because we've been so busy on the road so we've got at least I think we got some people coming from the office if not Maddie and I are going to have a lot of pig meat to eat. I'll put it that way. But that's what it looks like on one side. We're going to give it a little bit. We're going to flip it over and do it on the other side and they give it, like I said, about six hours, see what happens. <laughs> 